consequences than what was a breaking report about a woman paid for her silence. Now look, we don't know all the details about this story yet, but more is coming out. We can report the New York Times following up on that initial Wall Street Journal account that Trump arranged, a $130,000 hush payment. Now journalist Jacob Weisberg says that woman, Stephanie Clifford, and she performs under the name Stormy Daniels, also told him about a contract with Trump and the secret deal. The White House denies this report of any relationship. Trump's lawyer says he once again vehemently denies this allegation. More news, though, breaking this weekend. Another adult film star who'd already accused Trump of misconduct also allegedly agreed to a gag order. Jessica Drake, you may recall, she'd gone public before the election alleging Trump directly offered to pay her. When we entered the room, he grabbed each of us tightly in a hug and kissed each one of us without asking permission. Donald then asked me, what do you want? How much? After that, I received another call from either Donald or a male calling on his behalf, offering me $10,000. You may remember some of those press conferences. Here's what's new tonight. Drake's representatives first put out the statement that she signed an NDA agreement after the allegations of misconduct, and thus she can't so much as peep his name publicly. Then, and this is unusual, they put out another statement saying, I've been, never been told directly or indirectly that Drake signed this NDA or reached any settlement in regards to any interactions with President Trump. Legally, there are gag orders that require people to even deny the existence of a gag order. For more, we turn to former federal prosecutor Joyce Vance, and Neera Tandon uh, joins me again. Uh, Joyce, there's all sorts of contractual silence, uh, agreed upon silence in the law, uh, which does not always correlate with anything wrong, although it can. Um, your analysis, though, of what we're seeing here, which for Donald Trump, someone who has been pursued in court for the opposite, for not being willing to pay up or cough up anything. Here we're seeing reports of what for most people is a very substantial amount of money being paid, uh, apparently for some sort of silence. These uh, non-disclosure agreements, is what they're called, are a pretty standard way of resolving a sexual harassment lawsuit. But in this case, it doesn't look like there was a lawsuit or a threat of a lawsuit, but rather it was an effort to silence these women in at least one case on the eve of the election. Ari, they're a little bit interesting of a creature. These are contracts, as you point out, and they're state law documents. So they're governed by the law of the state in which they're entered into. Mm -hmm. And that raises interesting questions about what would happen if one of the parties breached them and what sort of law governs. So a lot of interesting, outstanding questions here. Well, before we, I know you want to get into a, a state law, uh, you know, law school exam analysis. Before we even get to that, Joyce, I, I wonder if just in big picture you could put it into perspective for our viewers here on the scale of this is totally false, I'm going to sue anyone who says it, which is what Donald Trump was saying at the time while running uh, against Hillary Clinton, and paying someone off. Uh, how close or far are those positions? Right. They're really far apart. And although the president has said that none of these allegations are true, this is a large type of a payout. Uh, too large, really, for us to accept the idea that there's not some truth or not some story here that he wants to have shelved. And in addition to that fact, there are, as, as you've pointed out, some other witnesses who heard contemporaneously or who were present who aren't bound by the disclosure agreements. So ultimately, the truth here will come out one way or the other. Well, and, and Neera, take a look at this reporting also in the Wall Street Journal about all the different, uh, I guess one could say, creative ways uh, things were made to go away. Tabloid owner American Media, an ally of Donald Trump, paid apparently $150,000 for a story from the 1998 Playman of the Year, um, but hasn't published her account. Uh, David Pecker there, the owner, uh, the close friends of Donald Trump, the New Yorker, did a long expose on, on that relationship. Uh, as, a, as a grizzled veteran campaign operative who, who came up against this machine, uh, what do you think we're learning, or to put it another way, what is everyone else learning that maybe you had um, already some insight into during 2016? I mean, the fact that there's a media empire that basically seemed to be paying out hush money seems to me to be a scandal in and of itself. I guess I would say the fact that we have a president who is is 
is subject to something, whatever it is, that requires him to pay or makes him make a decision to pay out $130,000, I don't know. It seems it seems like that should be a concern for our security forces. I mean, obviously, he's subject to black, being blackmailed about something that he does not want to get out. It strikes me as, hmm. I mean, obviously, we're living in a bizarro world here uh, every day. But the idea that the president has basically been forced or chosen to spend a lot of money to keep the silence of it uh, seems mm. a variety of women right seems to me like he's making a decision that there's information out there that would be actually embarrassed so that embarrassing to him he's willing to take pay great money lengths. for it so Nira, let me ask weird. you let me ask you this uh, do you think on the on the four corners of the public accounts of this story based on what we publicly know if this uh, were a story about then president obama would this be getting this amount of attention and scrutiny or more? I mean, almost anything that you'd apply to Barack Obama it would be incredible amounts of attention. The fact that we, uh, that this isn't wall to wall to wall coverage is, is a product of the fact that the president has done a variety of incredibly offensive things in the last, in the last few days. But in and of itself, I mean, the reason why it's newsworthy is because he's willing to pay people for silence, which is very unusual behavior by anyone, let alone the president of the United States. Right. And I really... Or even a presidential candidate. Right. And I clear. really think it underscores um, the game that he appeared to think he could play and, and get away with. And, and maybe it is, as I mentioned at the top of this segment, partly um, the media or the journalistic outlets' faults in falling into it. It was widely reporting how much he claimed he would sue people, which was a stance of some sort of asserted innocence, while actually, uh, as Joyce Vance's analysis points out, he was essentially doing something very far from that. Anira Tannen, thank you, as always. Joyce, one more question for you, so please stick up with me. Up